Well, hello there. Welcome to Compassion Danville. We are so excited that you have found us on these interwebs. If you are here with us by YouTube or Facebook or however God directed you to us, we are so thankful that you're here. Today's message is going to be incredible as it always is. If you're family, welcome home. We miss you guys so much. I really wish I was in that parking lot and I wish you were too. This is not the way we do church. But it's how everybody has to do church, so we'll comply. Uh, Today, if you are a new visitor, welcome. We are so excited that you're here. We want to get to know you, and we want you to get to know us. So please, this is interactive. We love comments. We love the eyeballs. We love the attaboys. We love the high fives. We love all of that. So anything that that inspires you from the message, anything that you want to throw out there. This is all about community and about connections. Feel free to hit those comments. We are looking forward to that. Today, our service is going to be a lot like it is when you're here physically. There's going to be a great worship set by our fantastic band. I was in here when they were practicing. It was fantastic. Then we're going to have a couple of announcements. You always have those. Then we're going to have a great testimony Whew, good one. And then we're going to have a great word with Pastor Jeff. So welcome to Danville. Welcome to Compassion Danville. We're so glad you're here. Let's worship. I don't want to be afraid every time I face the waves. I don't want to be afraid. I don't want to be afraid. I don't want to fear the storm just because I hear it roar. I don't want to fear the storm I don't want to fear the storm Peace be still Say the word And I will Set my feet upon the sea Till I'm dancing in the deep Peace be still You are here so it is well Even when my eyes can't see We'll trust the voice that speaks. I'm not gonna be afraid. These waves are only waves. I'm not gonna be afraid. I'm not gonna be afraid. I'm not gonna fear the storm. You are greater than its roar. I'm not gonna fear the storm.
Casey Hughes. Hi, Jeff. I am glad you're sitting on the couch with me today. Yes, sir. I don't know if you know this or not, but before you started coming to Compassion Church, a lot of your friends that go to church here were praying for you. Cool. We've never really had the chance before today to sit down and talk about your journey. Tell me a little bit about that. Like, like where were you before you started coming to Compassion? I had a great childhood. I really did, Jeff. Um, my parents were fantastic people. My family was great. We, drew, we grew up in the Jehovah's Witness Church. Um, to me, the Jehovah's Witness Church was a fear-based situation for me. I didn't really enjoy going to church that much because they checked up on you. They made sure that you were why you weren't coming to church. They were um, they always wanted you going out and knocking on doors and things like that, but not for the right reasons. And I didn't really enjoy being there. So I, I fell out of church a long time ago. Wow, so very different than the way I grew up or maybe a lot of people grew up. But, but So you fast forward past all of that childhood stuff. What did life look like right before you came here, like, like before day one of coming to church? Where were you? So I had just gone through a very nasty divorce, still fighting custody issues, things like that, and I had gotten to a really low point. And it was one Saturday evening, I was sitting in my dad's recliner while they were gone to the beach or something that weekend, who knows. And I was crying my eyes out and I texted my friend Ryan and I said, I'm about there, where's your church? And he said, just meet me at Starbucks tomorrow morning at nine o'clock. Wow, so, so you're going through all of that. You don't know it, but all of these people here are praying for you. Mm -hmm. And then you reach out to Ryan, meet me at Starbucks. What did day one at Compassion Danville look like for you? Well, he refused to let me get in my own car and drive to church because he knew what I'd do. I'd drive on, see everybody, and leave. Um, so I got in the vehicle with him, and he brought me here. And when I walked up to the church, there um, there were a few people in the parking lot welcoming, saying hello, which was very nice. But when I walked up, everybody was having this prayer circle inside the lobby. And uh, Jackie was the first one I, I locked eyes with. Um, she smiled at me, and it was very welcoming and very warm. That's the way it was the first time she met me, too. Oh, nice. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I came on in. I said hello to a few people that I had known b before church, and I came on into the message. And it seemed like every word that you spoke to me was sent through God. Um, it stepped on every toe I had. I was bruised by the time I left, um, cried through the entire sermon, and by the time I left, I was ready to bolt for the door, get in the car, go home, cry it out, figure out life from their own, see if it was going to get any better. But Jackie wouldn't let me go. <laughs> Jackie wouldn't let you go, and God wouldn't let you That's go. Right. So when I look at that, there was day one, and then there was a process after that. There was a process from day one to you came to my office and talked about things. There was baptism, salvation, all of those things. What has that journey been like from day one kind of, kind of leading up to today? Well, to be honest, it hasn't been easy. Um, when I took on Christianity and started coming to church, God was after me, but the devil was after me just as much. So there were a few things that I had to work through. But at that point, I was starting to understand that I needed to lean a little bit more on God to get me through those. So he grabbed me in a, in a couple of different sermons and said, listen to these words. And I did, and I cried through those too. And uh, most people will know that when I get up on stage, I sing the worship songs, and I can practice those things all week with no problem. Get up on stage, and the words hit me because the Holy Spirit is there, and I cry my way through the song. And um, I've learned to heal a little bit differently now, because even though I'm still in pieces, God's starting to pull those pieces back together. Wow, that's amazing, Casey. And what I see in you is... You talk about being lost, broken, all of those kinds of things. And you came into a church, and now I see you with a circle of Christian friends. I see you serving in the church. You have such a servant's heart. Yeah, you're up here on the stage, but you're just... You're just one of those people that if I knew, I said, Casey, we got a situation, clean up on aisle two in the ladies' restroom. You'd, <laughs> I know, Where's the window? Uh, right, 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 right. I know you would take care of that <laughs> thing right. for us. And I just so That's appreciate right. that. And I, from my heart to yours, when I sit in these chairs and I look on the stage and I know your story, mm -hmm. and I've heard you talk about, man, when I, you first started singing, I don't know these songs. Mm -hmm. And seeing what God has done through that, I'm just amazed. Mm -hmm. I thank God for you, Casey. I thank God for this church. Oh, man. Thank you. Worthy of every song we could ever sing. Worthy of all the praise we could ever win. Worthy of every breath. 
we could ever be. We live for you. We live for you. Jesus, the name above every other name. Jesus, the only one who could ever say. just two announcements. The first one is we have a new facility. We have worked crazy hours getting everything out of Deer Run Road and over to 215 Third Avenue. We have cleaned out everything, even Jeff's old office. So the next time we meet together, we'll be at the beautiful church facility uh, at 215 Third Avenue. We are so excited. You're not going to believe how spectacular that building is. So that is absolutely something to look forward to, and we can't wait. 
The second announcement is, if you have recently come into a relationship with Jesus, boy, are we so proud of you. We're rejoicing with you. We can't wait to to be a part of what God's doing through you. If you would take the time to to email Paula Powell, uh, her email address is going to be in the comments. She and Casey Carnes do a fantastic job with our grow class, and she will be so, so happy to get in touch with you. We all rejoice with you in that decision. So please let us know how we can help you along in your journey with Jesus. But it all starts with that email to Paula Powell. And now let's go into our message. Hey, Jackie. <laughs> hey, Jeff. Welcome to the couch. You going to help me preach today? I'm going to try. I'm going to give it my sh- best shot. So thank you guys for letting us come into your home. We're thrilled to be here today. Uh, again, if you're a visitor, if this is your first time being a part of one of our Compassion Church services, obviously this is a lot different than what we normally do, but we're just thankful that you let us come into your home. Can't wait to share a little short message with you right now, but before we get started, can we just pray? Let's just pray together. Lord Jesus, I just thank you that we have this time together today. Thank you for technology that allows us to come into homes. And God, we need to hear from you today. Lord, whatever is said in this time, let your voice be heard in the hearts of your people. I ask you to bring peace and confidence. And Lord, encourage us and strengthen us in our time together. In Jesus' name, amen. So, thanks for coming out. I'm going to ask you a couple of questions in just a minute and uh, get you to help me with the story that we're telling today, all right? Okay. All right, so so thinking about what I wanted to say to you guys today, and I thought about the last couple of weeks, you know, the reality of this whole coronavirus situation, and that's what's on everybody's mind right now. We are all dealing with it. Um, the reality of it is we've just really gone through about two weeks. And so thinking back over the last couple of weeks and thinking, what do people need to hear? What, what's on people's mind? And I think last week, it was kind of week one, we were really just getting used to it, and you see all of the things that's going on. I mean, I don't know about you guys, man, but I am a junkie for NBC Nightly News. I don't care what you think about it, Lester Holt is my guy. Come on, somebody. Lester gets on there telling the news, and he's telling about what's going on in New York and Italy, and you watch these things, and you see the graphics and how how the epidemic or pandemic is taking over in such a large way and you can't help but just feel fear fear about the disease fear about the economy all of those kinds of things but I think that's where people were last week not to say that we're not still there but as I've talked with people this week it seems to me that people are really just getting tired of being in the house if you have you talked to people who just kind of stir crazy right now <laughs> The person I look at in the mirror, yes. <laughs> what, what are you hearing from people about just just taking care of kids and being home, not being able to go shopping? You hearing any of those stories? Oh, absolutely. Everybody's frustrated and wondering how long this is going to last. And right now it's kind of entertaining and it's kind of funny. But when you and your bromance with Lester Holt... Uh, right. So when he talks about August, that kind of keeps it real. I know Allie, our daughter, posted, I'm running out of activities with these three kids. You know, what am I supposed to do? It's tough. It's really tough. Well, it is tough. And so so that's what I want to talk about today because I think that's the question that I hear people asking is, what am I supposed to do? So I just want to talk about what do we do now? What, what, what do we do now? And I got a couple of things I want to just throw your way. Way. This is a fantastic preacher's outline because I got a bunch of C's and I'm so proud of all of my C's that's in the outline. Um, if you are uh, following along at home, which obviously you are, and you want to follow along with our notes, you can go to Version right now. Take just a minute, open up your Version Bible app on your iPad or on your uh, smartphone, computer, whatever, and there should be a link right below us in the bottom uh, that will give you the description of how to get there. Just follow that link or it may have been mailed out to you, whatever. Follow the link, you version, and you can follow along with my notes. So what do we need now? I got three things. What, three, I, got, I got three things <laughs> that I think people need now. Um, here's the first thing. Um, we need connection, and we find it in community. We need connection 
We find it in community. You may say, well, Jeff, connection and community, aren't those two, isn't that the same thing? Well, no, it's not. Because you can be connected to a whole group of people you're connected, but you're not in community. If you're connected, you can be connected to, to 10 bad apples. And if everyone that you're connected to is only concerned about themselves, they're not concerned about other people, then you may be connected to them, but you're not getting any benefit. The difference in connection and community is community is people who care. We need community right now. Let, let me just read you this passage of scripture from Acts as I talk about community. And just listen to how the, 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 the New Testament early church lived in community. In Acts 2, verse 44 through 47, it says, All the believers were together. Now remember, these were people who's abandoned everything to be followers of Jesus. And they don't have their families. They don't have the, the, uh, the ties that they had had before. They have each other. And so they're having to lean into each other. And it says they were together together. They had everything in common, meaning what's mine is yours, what's yours is mine. It says, selling their possessions and goods, they gave to anyone as, as he had need. I don't know if toilet paper was a thing then. Was it a thing then? Oh, keep reading. <laughs> it says, I mean, if somebody needed toilet paper, they gave it to us. What it says. Yeah. Every day they continued to meet together in the temple courts. They broke bread in their homes and they ate together with glad and sincere hearts, praising God and enjoying the favor of all people. And the Lord added to their number daily those who were being saved. What's my point? Man, these people lived in community. They took care of each other. If somebody didn't have enough, somebody who had more than they needed, needed would give to that person. They checked on each other. They made sure they were okay. It's one thing to be connected, but we need to be in community. And church right now, what that looks like for us, we get the whole social distancing thing. We get that we can't be in the same place at the same time, but we have the beauty of the internet. And so even like right now, watching this message, you can, you can connect with other people. So I'm encouraging you to comment and, and get involved in that. That's, that's community. Where have you seen community lately? Like, where have you seen people taking care of each other? Everywhere, everywhere. Um, people calling and checking on people like Miss Kathy and um, Vicky, who's going through chemo treatments. And um, but I, I have seen it a lot at Third Avenue. Um, I don't know if you guys know this, but our Hope Center girls have been over there. Uh, the first phasers have been over there every day. Whatever they can do, from painting to moving furniture to, I mean, anything that we've asked them to do, they've done that and then some. They are invaluable to that process over there. And I got to give a shout out to Student Ministries. Um, poor Wes is running that van to death, and he knows exactly how many he needs to have to stay in compliance with the CDC regulations and those guys are there every time he picks them up and I love it when you said they they broke bread together um Wes is feeding those guys and I know Angela has fixed you know had lunch ready for them and um it is you you get to know people when you work with them side by side and um especially when you know, we we think this thing with the students um, not having school anymore that somehow that's a vacation for them. But Dylan's graduating this year, and we don't even know if he's going to have a graduation. So right. the the talks around the, the van and the talks when they're sitting around eating lunch, um, and our girls from the Hope Center have just ministered to my soul every day they've been there faithfully. Well, and it's, it's this whole thing of you're not in it alone. You're not in it alone. And so if you're sitting at home today and you feel like, man, I know that I'm, I'm not alone. I do have friends who are out there. I just can't get to them and they can't get to me. I would encourage you today, if, if, if everything has been quiet, maybe it's up to you today to pick up the phone and call someone or to, to email or text or, or, or however you do it. Connect on Facebook, but, but reach out and start that process, which that leads me to the next thing. Um, the first thing was we need connection. We find it in community. The second thing. This is your second C. This is your oh, oh, second, second set of C's, because <laughs> each one has two C's. Thank you for noticing the hard work I put in to make it all start with C. <laughs> second set of C's is, and I will explain this, it may not make sense right off the bat, but, but what do we need? We need concern, and we find it in charity. We need concern. Let me explain that. 
When I say if you're connected to people who are only concerned about themselves, let me just ask you this. Do you ever just get sick of yourself? Like, like, like I get sick of what goes on in my own head sometimes when I'm worried about, man, the stock market's crashing. What's that going to do to 401k? I see that New York's had its deadliest day. I see that the outbreak is, is growing. Is it going to affect me? Is it going to affect Jackie? Is it going to affect our family? After a while, man, I just feel like I'm going loopy in my own head. But when I say we need concern, Concern means that, that I got to have something to pour all of this energy into. You know as well as I do, some of the best days of your life have been when you've been pouring into someone else, helping someone else, meeting a need. And so we need concern, but we find it in charity. We find it in charity. Let me explain this. Um, we, we typically read from a modern translation, and so I'm going to read this from the NIV. Most of you have heard this passage of Scripture from 1 Corinthians 13. I've read this so many times at weddings because it just fits well. But the truth is, 1 Corinthians 13, the love chapter, uh, was not really written as a wedding passage. It was written for followers of Christ, the church, and Paul was telling people, this is how we as followers of Jesus are to love each other. And so in, in the NIV, he says love is patient love is kind notice how many times he says love he says it does not envy now remember this is the way we're to treat each other it doesn't boast it's not proud it's not rude it's not self-seeking it's not easily angered keeps no record of wrongs how am i doing am i doing okay with all doing of that great, honey. good good great. good all right all right all right <laughs> Verse 6 says, love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. You make me nervous being up here. I'm not used to you being here. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always perseveres. Yeah, but Jeff, I thought you said we find it in charity. What's that got to do with anything? Well, for all my old school people in the house, we're the old school people. Oh, we're the King James folks. Today is your day. I never read from the King James in these, but if you crack open the old 1611 KJV, that same passage of Scripture, 1 Corinthians 13, where in verse 4 in the NIV it says, Love is patient. Old KJV says, Charity suffereth long. The same word that he uses for love, KJV uses as charity. And so the KJV in chapter 13 says, Charity suffereth long and is kind. Charity, love, envieth not. Charity, again, love, vaunteth not itself, which means it doesn't puff itself up. We need concern. We find it in charity. What God's Word says is the way that we find this thing where we pour ourselves out, where we, where we come alive, even if we're walled up, is in loving other people. Love people. Don't be rude to people. Take care of people. Meet each other's needs. And so, I guess, man, when I look at that, just to go just one level deeper, if you look at the original language, charity in the KJV, love in the NIV, you know what the original language word is, and this is important because you're an Emmaus person. Emmaus people, you know the word agape. Agape in the, in the Greek is one of the, one of the multiple ways that the Greeks expressed love. Well, the word charity in the KJV or love in the NIV comes from the Greek word love. And as I was studying that, it says agape means love feast. Love feast, meaning that, that we're just going to lavish love. You can imagine pulling up at a table, man, for all of y'all whose mama makes you go through the Wendy's drive through line and you can't get to Baconator. You got to get to foe for foe. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Got to get to foe for foe. We're not getting to Baconator. Agape is a love feast. You can get to Baconator. You can go down to the BK and get to... I'm getting too far. You back to your C's. <laughs> <laughs> you get what I'm saying. Lavish love on people. Where, so, all right, being serious for a minute. Where have you seen people who are, yeah, we're in this quarantine thing, but, but maybe you've noticed people in the community who are just loving on other people? Big Mo. Big old Mo, that gentle giant. Um small business owner not sure what the future holds with everybody shutting down everybody's you know out of work so maybe they won't be doing their car repairs during this time and mo put a post out on facebook that said 
I'm going to turn this thing around. And he started a canned food drive, um, made all kinds, he and his beautiful wife made all kinds of, I think it was 50 bags of groceries for anybody who wanted it. He didn't care who came. Whoever came was going to be treated with respect and love. And he did it in conjunction with our church. And we were so proud of him and tried to, to get as many donations as we could to him and just watched him. He's just an awesome fellow, he and his wife. And and when we pulled up, Esteban and I pulled up with a whole lot of, of uh, product from God's pit crew. Um, you could see that he was leading his workers in how to love people during this time. And it was an amazing thing. Amazing. There you go, Mo and Jam. We see y'all out there getting it done. If y'all need any work done on your car, go to Big Mo's out on 58. But I do have one more example. And I'm going to tell on you. I mean, I was about to do a commercial for okay, Moe's. Okay, so there. anyway, I just did the commercial for Moe's. So today, Jeff and I had a business transaction. Say it with me. That's a cool word. Business transaction. Business. Business. And we needed a cashier's check. So I say to my husband, let me ask you a question. <laughs> where, where do we get this uh, business check for? And you said one business so i thank the lady and when we got to do our business transaction did you tell me right so you asked me who to have it made out to uh -huh. what you're telling me is you <laughs> love me so much that just because i made a mistake you wouldn't dare bring it up to all our closest friends with all 100 million of them and <laughs> so we couldn't even start the business transaction because pastor jeff gave me the wrong information and i said sugar don't you worry about it i'll be right back go on, girl go on, i girl. was mad as an old wet hen and i had to go right by cedar terrace who we love and I picked up the phone and I called Miss Cindy who is the matriarch of that property and I said what can I do for you I said are you feeding those babies and she said I am and I said what do you need and she said I don't need a thing right now but I know when I do you're the first person that I'm gonna call and it's not Jackie it's compassion and so that means the world to me and I settled my little self right on back down and all of a sudden it wasn't a big deal to go get the the cashier's check changed and it wasn't a big deal that I, mean, I didn't think it was a big deal it was all along, but whatever, it was whatever. thank you Miss Cindy <laughs> well no that's exactly right and, and so compassion church Thank you, man. You guys are making a difference. There's Cedar Terrace Apartments out on Memorial Drive, and those guys love you. And a lot of you they've never met, but they know that you're compassionate and you're making a difference. So, uh, Sugar, do you think I could give them one more set of C's before oh, Lord, we finish? I'll just pass out if you don't. Go ahead. <laughs> so, so the last set of C's, we've talked about needing connection, finding it in community. We've talked about needing concern and finding it in charity. I'm joking around a lot today, just trying to make you guys laugh because everybody's holed up in the house. But the last one is, is the reality of where we are. And we can't look past the fact that we do still need courage because these are scary times. What are the last two C's? Well, it's we need courage and we find it in Christ. We need courage and we find it in Christ. And so I'm going to read you this verse. This is one of these verses of Scripture that... Jackie Lynch wants to slap me right across the face when I read it to her because when you're worried and anxious and all stirred up about something, the last thing you want is your preacher husband to read you Jesus' words saying, don't worry, right? Well, I'm about to read you Jesus' words telling you not to worry. Uh, in Luke 12, 22, Jesus said to his disciples, therefore, I tell you, do not worry about your life. When Jesus is talking to his disciples, are you a disciple of Jesus? Are you a disciple? We're disciples of Jesus. He's still telling us this. Don't worry about your life. What you're going to eat. About your body. About what you will wear. Life is more than food. And the body more than clothes. Consider the ravens. They don't sow or reap. They have no storeroom or barn. Yet God feeds them. And how much more valuable you are than birds. Who of you, by worrying, can add a single hour to his life? And I want to just look right in this camera right now 
and say to somebody who's sitting there thinking, man, the world has passed me by. I'm stuck in this house. God must not know I'm here. Nobody knows I'm here. Yes, he does. God knows and he cares. And he's telling you through his word that has been preserved for couple of thousand years that he still loves you and he knows what's going on and he's working 10 steps ahead of you right now. Here's what I see happening. Fear is screaming into the minds and hearts and souls of a lot of people's lives. And I just want to tell you right now as you watch this, when fear screams at you, if you were to picture fear as a diabolical, demonic force, and it's screaming at you, be afraid so that I can terrorize you. Be afraid so that I can destroy you. Be afraid so that I can wreck your life because I hate you. That's what fear really is. When you pull back the veil, fear is a tool that the enemy uses to keep you all wound up and stirred up. So... Today, tomorrow, as this week progresses, when you sense that fear is screaming at you, what do you do? I'm telling you right now, you have an opportunity to make a decision. And that decision is, uh, you can go two ways. So if I'm drawing a diagram, if I go this way, I lean into fear. If I lean into fear, man, I start saying, yeah, what if this does happen? What if the stock market crashes? What if we go into a depression? What if I get the virus? What if my family, you go into all of this, what if, what if, what if? What comes from that? Well, the next thing is anxiety, and then there's depression, and then there's physical health issues, and there's mental health issues, and your, your whole world is wrecked because you chose to take hold of this thing that may or may not happen. On the other hand, the decision can just as easily be made to take hold of, I ain't got time for that. Instead of saying fear, yes. Instead of leaning in, what if you push away? What if you push back? What if you tune out? What if you talk to God? What if you say, God, you said such powerful words. Fear is screaming at me, but I'm tuning it out and I'm looking at God. I'm saying, God, you said. Well, what did God say? See, this is where it's important that we hide the scriptures in our heart. God, you said, I'll never leave you. I'll never forsake you. God, you said, do not fear. A bunch of times, some people say 365 times. I don't know if that's true or not, but it sure does say it a lot of times. God, you said that Jesus was out on the water asleep in the boat. The wind and the waves are kicking up and blowing. And Jesus, you woke up and you said, shh. Those winds and those waves became still. Jesus, you told Peter to step out of the boat and he walked on the water. I'm not listening to fear. What happens when you do that? When you say, God, you say, and then you tell God what he said. And then you step into that. And instead of having fear, you say, that's got to go out of here. God, I'm trusting you. And you start stepping into that trust that comes from having confidence in God's word. You know what happens then? You have just exhibited to God that you have faith. You didn't just have faith by believing. You stepped into it and trusted him, even though it was hard. And when you do that, every time you do that, you step into faith, you act on faith, you open up new levels that God wants to take you to. He can't take you to the next level until you have exhibited that you have learned the lesson that he wants to take you to. Why are you still stuck in fear and worrying? Because you still continue to keep latching on to, yeah, what if? I want to help you, so I'm telling you today, don't do that. You've had a rough week. There's been a lot going on. And I've watched you have some sleepless nights and have some issues. Tell me about that. What's been going on? Well, you know, when this first happened with all the coronavirus and all, I know we sat down as a family and we tried to find the positive in it. Um, we've got two girls that are active and we're active. And, you know, it, sometimes it feels like we're just passing in the night. Um, and little Naomi wants family night more than anything. And we'd love to give that to her on a regular basis. But we've overscheduled and we've gotten so busy. And I was telling my family, I think that this virus <laughs> or the fear of it or the quarantine has caused us to stop long enough to appreciate our family, to eat at the table, to go to Target and get a couple of games and um, read bedtime stories and have honest conversations um, in our house. 
Having said that, that's the good part. If there's a good part to the coronavirus scare, that has been the good part. And you have said, I've, I've liked having you home. Yeah. I like us being together as a family. Um, the, the, the flip side of that is life still happens. And it's not always good. And the old Jackie Lynch, Jackie Roan, had a way of dealing with things. Um, and she was very volatile and very reactive and um, ready to um, pounce like a lion. Having taken that time before all of this started to do my devotions in the morning when everybody's asleep, to journal, um, to pray, um, to read my Bible, when life happens now, I'm not so uh, reactive because, therefore, Jackie, <laughs> I'm much more uh, proactive. And I tell myself, what would a disciple do? How should I react? Um, I know who I am. I know whose I am. I want to represent Jesus. I was in a meeting the other day and a lady said, listen, I don't do the things that I used to do anymore. Not for me, but I don't want to embarrass Jesus. And it's funny that you said something about um, the people in the boat and when the waves were coming. Um, in one of my devotions, it says, uh, a pastor was writing the devotion and he said, a lady came to me and said, how do I wake Jesus up when we're in the boat together and the waves are coming? And he said, oh, sweet lady, you don't wake Jesus up. You rest with him. <laughs> that's really good. And so that's what I, that's what we are trying to do as a family. And uh, this week has been horrible. This week has been challenging, to say the least. Uh, just life circumstances. But I've got a God who walks in front of me, who walks behind me, uh, and beside me. And life, whatever whatever life throws my way. Um, I Just recently, I was telling you today, usually when I get in my Jeep, it is volume up, windows down, um, the hair flapping out the window. But this week, it has been very closed and cut the radio off. Just talk to God and say, you know, Jesus, I'm scared and life is not what I thought it would be right now. And just help me. Just praying over my children and you know that is such a good word jackie and, and I, I i honor you for that i see you doing everything you just talked about reading up early in the morning doing your devotions reading multiple devotions and journaling and all of those things and i see how it's making a difference in your life instead of being tossed to and fro blown all about you have an anchor and that anchor comes from leaning into god and so what i want to do right now is just look into that camera and realize that you who are sitting there watching this right now like I saw some posts on Facebook earlier in the week saying I know I'm not supposed to be afraid but the reality of it is I am and maybe that's you right now and maybe you're saying Jeff help me with that well and that's what I want to do as we close our time together right now I'm just going to ask you right there in your living room or wherever you're watching this just close your eyes just close your eyes put your things down and just let the voice of God begin to calm your spirit you know if you're a if you're a follower of Christ you know that you have the power of God living inside of you and maybe you've forgotten that maybe the the fear has overwhelmed you and maybe you just need to be reminded today that God is for you that he's working all things for your good that 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 he has called you to be in community maybe today if you're a father of Christ and, and you're you're isolated maybe you need to connect with some other people maybe if all of the thoughts of your mind are about yourself and what's going to happen Maybe I could just encourage you to think of one person that you could shoot a text to or call or do some kind of an act of kindness. Maybe today, if fear is screaming at you and you realize that Jesus 
can get up out of the boat and take care of things. Maybe you just need to acknowledge that to him. If you're a follower of Christ, I just want to remind you of that. But if you're tuning in today and you've, you've never made that decision to follow Jesus, and you say, Jeff, I really don't even know what that means. Like, I'm not a religious person. I just want to tell you this is not about religion. This is about real life. We can't even meet in our facility right now, but we're connected to the God who loves us, and you can be too. And you can have access to all of these things. If you've never given your life to Christ, if you've never surrendered and said, Jesus, be my Lord, then the truth is you don't have access to these things. You're living on your own. But that's not God's plan for your life. With your heads bowed, eyes closed, God's plan for your life is to be in community with Him, with Him leading you through your life. Maybe today you know that you've been making decisions that have gotten you to this point where you are, and you're ready to turn out of that. You want to step into a new world. You want the peace that comes from knowing Jesus. I want to tell you, you can have that right now. Right there where you're sitting, every head bowed, every eye closed. If that's you and you know that you want that, just from your heart to God. You don't have to say it out loud. Nobody needs to know this but you and Jesus. Just talk to him right now. Say, Jesus, I need you. I'm asking you today. Take control of my life. I give you my life. Save me, Jesus. Help me to walk in community with you. Help me to love others the way you've loved me. Help me, Jesus, with this fear. God, protect me. Protect my family. I'm trusting you to go ahead of me. In your name I pray. If you just prayed that prayer, you just prayed and asked Jesus to take over your life. And we want to hear from you. So if you did that, there's lots of ways that you can do this. On the platform you're looking at, depending on how you're logging in, uh, you may see something that says a connect card. If you, don't, if you see that, click on that box, fill it out. If you don't, just shoot us a message, either in the comments or you can shoot me a message on Facebook. Just look me up and send me a personal message. And so I want to pray for you right now. Jesus, thank you for everyone who has said yes to you. For, for these who are becoming new believers, Lord. I thank you for that. And Jesus, for these who have been believers that maybe have just lost their way, help them, Jesus. Thank you for your love. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. I want to thank you guys for hanging in there with us. Before we wrap everything up, I want to talk to you just a moment about, about one more way that we worship here at Compassion Church. And those of you who, who call Compassion Church your home, you know that on a weekly basis, one of the ways that we worship is through our giving. And that's never more important than it is right now. We see that, that there is a community around us that's hurting, and we want to be that church that steps into it. So over the last week, you mentioned Big Mo and how he's going out and, and making bags and giving them away and and we we got food from God's pit crew last week we've been giving those things away I think Moe's working on a on a food truck and we're working on getting things going with a tutoring program for after school and there's so many projects that we're working on as a church behind the scenes that you can't see right now and the way that we do that is through your continuous giving. And all the while, we're moving into our new facility over at 3rd Avenue. You're going to be in there soon, and you're going to see that. What am I saying? Well, I want you to hear me say this. We're trusting God for everything we need. And I'm trusting you, as you invest in this, in this ministry that we're in, your giving is going to allow us to have more than we need to be able to help other people. And that's what we're asking you right now. And so this is a time where if we were having a church service, we would have our ushers come up and take up the baskets, but we can't do that. So today, on your screen, you're going to see a couple of ways that you can give online. You can text CC Danville to 77977. Simple, easy way. That link is going to be on your screen. Text CC Danville to 77977, or you can go to Compassion passionchurch.cc forward slash Danville. That'll take you to our website and you can click on the giving link there. Very simple, very easy. I want to thank you guys for those of you who, who have never given online. I'm encouraging you to try that. Uh, I'm encouraging you to try it and see how easy it is. It is as easy as making a purchase on Amazon.com and I know y'all know how to buy some stuff on some Amazon. Right on. There you go. Something was delivered to our house today. Do you know what that is? No idea. It must be Ben's. 
Oh, okay. Anyway, so that's it, guys. Thank you for your generosity. Thank you for tuning in. If this message spoke to you, if it was helpful to you, we would love for you to share it on your page. But thanks for uh, checking in with us. We'll be shooting more messages to you. We'll be checking in with you throughout the week. Thanks for hanging out with us today. You guys go out and have a great day. We love you. See you soon.